Um, well, I think um, my son's point of view would be he's actually um, making claims to his sovereignty and he's telling uh, the government that he never did consent to be governed. So he feels it's important to, to put that into writing and, and send it off. Sure, and I, I wholeheartedly commend his, the, his the, the motivation, if not the behavior. I just find the behavior, I'm old, I'm, I'm lazy, I wouldn't waste my time with the paperwork. If they came to hassle me, then I would get all legal up in their face about it and, and you know, deny they have any authority, etc., etc. But I would uh, the other foot and demand that they prove they have, have authority over my sovereignty and respond to it that way as opposed to initiating the process. But it's just a matter of personal opinion. On the other hand, like I say, you know, that's certainly to be commended. The the motivation, um, uh, I don't know what result will come of it, but uh, hey, have at it. Okay, <laughs> John, I want to thank you for the call. I, uh, very interesting concept. Um, very quickly, Andrew in Australia would like to know uh, your feelings on the suggested quickening that was put forth by uh, Father Malachi Martin and others. There's a lot of, uh, okay, but they're also, again, they're responding to and using different words for what I think of as the same emotional motivation that we're seeing cause the uh, people of Egypt to respond the way they are. They were dealing with conditions that they had uh, a week ago. They were dealing with those same conditions a year ago. So what was it that changed to cause them to get up and be motivated now? And it's those same kind of motivations that are causing the, the fellow we just talked about to have his son file the papers. It's causing people in Belgrade to start rioting. And it's, uh, it's the, the other people that are going to see it in a religious framework because of where they're coming from. So it's the filters you have on, and we're all looking at the same thing, I think. All right. Um, mm, sorry, I don't know how that one got through. It's from the United States, and we do not answer flash messages from the United States, as I announced, all oh, two or three hundred times. We have telephones for you if you're in the USA, 623-444-5889, or toll-free, 888-223-4599. The reason we have flash messages, folks, is not so you who can call us can use the flash message to escape having to use your voice. That's not the reason. The reason we have flash messages and, and restrict it to people who are not in the USA and not in Canada is quite simply because I have, if you're in the USA or Canada, I have a toll-free number for you that I'll even pay for the call if you need me to. But I don't have one for them. So the flash message feature is just for them. Caller, are you, are you willing to hang on through the break? All right, hang in there. We'll be back, folks, right after this, so don't go away. Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show and my guest this evening, Cliff High. Cliff, we have a caller online, so let's go straight to the telephone. Uh, caller, you're live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Um, hi, this is Leslie, and I'm calling from Oregon. Hi, Leslie. Hi, yeah, I was wondering, um, well, I'm the kind of person that likes to see the glass as half full versus half empty, and I was wondering if you have, um, uh, if, if there's any times when the web bot has predicted something, I don't know, um, positive, so to speak, and um, it has occurred, and if there are any other positive predictions out there. If that makes sense. Sorry. Sure, it does. We we have um we have positive predictions, but they are not uh, half and half. It's not like the half all kind of a glass. The reason we get a smaller percentage of the positive we've determined is because of the uh, cultural tendency in the English language speaking countries, which we started with, to express negative emotions easier than they do positive ones. So it's a lot easier to go and tell somebody in a carjacking or, you know, they cut you off on a drive, driving or something that you hate them as opposed to loving them. So we don't get a lot of positives just because of the way in which the culture is set up. But we do have positive predictions. We have predictions for basically what we're calling the new electrics, but it's, uh, you can think 
Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. Sure. And thank you for the call. Um, Cliff, we uh, have another call on hold. But let me ask you this. Do you publish those positive messages as well? When I, when I put them in the reports, I'll discuss the new electrics and I'll put in the positive language we have there and I've been pointing out certain personalities that will be appearing that will be making a positive impact on the planet. To a certain extent, I have a tendency to restrict those even more than we see them in the data because I, I don't want people trying to live up to, I don't want to create a situation where I describe a role that someone else tries to fit themselves into and that was not the universe's intent. Uh, Makes sense? Makes sense. All right, caller, you're live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Well, if that's me, uh, I'm Scott, and I'm calling from Dallas. Hello, Scott, I, calling from my old hometown. Uh, your hometown, all right. And I grew up there. Yeah, Cliff, I'm, I've got a question, but it's, it's in your new report, and it, okay. it, it's on page 8 of the new report in the markets entity about yeah. um, shelves being emptied and half-filled delivery trucks. And you say that um, the linguistics show that all of this slowdown is going to be blamed on global economics rather than deliberately by suppliers shifting resources. And I wonder if you could expand on that last line a little bit. We have some data that seems to suggest that the powers that be are going to siphon off, if you will, they're going to, instead of siphoning off money, they're going to start siphoning off resources. And so uh, some weird kinds of commodities in, in, in increasing amounts will, will be disappearing, and they'll blame it on the global economic stuff if they even bother to respond. The, um, as a temporal marker, the more they just don't respond to these weirdnesses, and there's no official explanation as to why, for instance, you know, double crunchy uh, fruity goodies aren't on the shelf anymore. Uh, right. The um, more that occurs, the more you'll know that they're really stashing them away and things are getting close. So that's, it's them shifting resources for themselves, basically. Correct. them underground, whatever. Correct, or wherever, right. Right, right. okay. Well, thanks very much, and, and you know, good luck to us all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pie up, dude. Yeah, pie up. <laughs> Thanks much for the call. 623-444-5889. And um, we have time. If you call right now, we have time for one more call. Cliff, how does it all affect you? I mean, uh, you know, you see all of this stuff and, and uh, you know... I would think you're like all the rest of us. You want things to go well, and then you see it all piling up on your computer screen, and it says, <laughs> forget it, the world's going to take a dump on you next week. Um, it doesn't do me too good. I'm an old, raspy, bald fellow, and, uh, you know, people who know me would not uh, disagree with the appellation of bastard. Well, well uh, you know, the, the, the does it depress you? Oh, certainly, yeah. yeah. I've been extremely depressed both by the work and I've uh, attempted to take every effort I could, any opportunity the universe allowed to uh, bail on it. But the uh, universe and I had this deed only and it kept providing its the end of it, so I was stuck. And so I've been doing it. And I have to say that really what's got me going is it has made a difference in a lot of lives. I get, for instance, from Australia, I got a bunch of people that said, hey, because we had read the reports, we knew that we were potentially headed for floods in this area, and we stored food, and now we don't have to sweat this next week mm -hmm. after the flood hit their, their region, that kind of thing. So yeah. we get positive feedback from the effort, and that compensates for the, the negativity I've got to swim in. I see. That's good. All right, caller, um, we're going to take your call, uh, and you'll have to make it real fast because we're just about out of time. Your first name and from where are you calling? Um, this is Joe from Greenville, Wyoming. Hello, Joe. And uh, how you doing? How you doing, Cliff? Been a fan a long time, and uh, just wanted to know um, how much validity or how much credit do you give Patrick Garrell in his calculations in his books? And uh, I found I found one mathematical error in his book, and I've been over it uh, half a dozen times. So I give him a real huge amount of credibility. Plus, I've done my own solar observations, and I disagree. Slightly. It's not 88 days, it's 87.65 days in the cycle. But other than that, I cannot dispute what he's put out. Doesn't mean his conclusions are 100% correct. I mean, he can conclude that we're going to have a pole shift and that the, maybe we should be up high. But again, there's no way of saying that it's going to be worse than the 
has been absolutely enjoyable, although depressing, but enjoyable. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's depressing, but we got good pie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you will, just stay on the uh, telephone line with me for a moment as I bring the show to a close. Ladies and gentlemen, mo momentous events are happening all around the world, and you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Anyone that tells you these kinds of things have been going on forever, they're just we're just more aware of it now. Um, they're smoking left-handed cigarettes. There's far, far more of it, and it's more intense, and it seems to be happening more frequently, and the intensity seems to be growing. This should not be a surprise to anyone if you read any prophecies, any prophecies, Nostradamus, Edgar Cayce, the Bible, the Quran, or anybody else. They all talk about this time. Some of you read uh, and, and have studied and researched the Mayan prophecy or the Hopi prophecies. They all talk about this kind of a, a time. Some people are terrified of it. But there's really no reason to be. Because whatever is, just is. And as long as you have your surfboard, keep it handy, stay ready, and ride the wave, you should be okay. Do you have your surfboard yet? You ought to. Tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about something really, really weird.